Okay, so January 2012, Unit 1, Physics, Ed Excel, and AS level. Okay, so a lot of these Unit 1 questions start with questions about scalars and vectors on units. So you may see that pattern emerging. So it's unlikely that you're not going to get some questions about it. Which statement about scalar and vector quantities is correct? Scalars have direction only, that's not true. Scalars have distance only. Distance is a very specific thing, that's not true. Uh, vectors have magnitude and direction, that is true. Vectors have magnitude and distance, that's not true. Which of the following is a unit? Equivalent to the Pascal. Okay, so Pascals come from pressure equation. Pressure is like force over area. So we're look, looking for something that matches up with force over area. So pressure is force over area and F equals MA. Then pressure is like um, MA over area. Now, MA is going to be like kilograms times meter per second squared. And then we're going to be dividing by meter squared or multiplying by meters to the minus 2. So the meters is going to partly cancel with the meters to the minus 2. So we end up with kilogram meters to the minus 1 second to the minus 2 and that's C. Three. A model boat is crossing a stream. The stream is traveling east at a speed of 1.5 meters per second the boat is heading north at a speed of 0 0.5 meter per second. The magnitude of the resultant velocity will be. So the stream's going east at 1.5 meter per second, and the boat is heading north at 0 0.5 meter per second. Those two are going to add together. So the resultant is going to be the sum, the vector sum of 1.5 east with 0 0.5 north and the size of that r is going to be the square root of the other two uh, squared and added together so you're looking for the root of 1.5 squared plus 0 0.5 squared and that's answer d. So we're told that questions 4 and 5 refer to this diagram. The diagram shows the forces acting on an object on an inclined surface the component of R parallel to the inclined surface is going to be one of these values and we have to find out what it is. Well, crucially here, R is at 90 degrees to that surface. So it will have no component along the inclined surface. So let's say. The object in the diagram would do one of these things, remain at rest on the surface, move down the surface at a constant speed, accelerate down the surface, move up the surface at a constant speed. Well clearly they're not showing any force acting up. So what you're really going to get, there's, there's no force acting this way. So as a result of that, you're going to get a component of W acting down the slope. And that's going to cause the object to accelerate down the slope. And that's going to be C. Question 6. In the expression F equals 6 pi e to r v, e to represents density and V represents viscosity, R represents radius and eta represents density, R represents radius and V represents viscosity, eta represents viscosity and V represents velocity. Well, you've done your book work, you'll know it's D. A wire of cross-sectional area A and length X is stretched by a force F. The young modulus of the material of the wire is big E. The extension delta X is going to be given by one of these expressions. 
So we remember that Young modulus E is stress over strain. Stress is force over area and strain is delta x over x. So we're taking force over area and dividing by delta x over x. And that's the same as turning the second thing upside down and multiplying. And so that's giving us A equal to fx over A delta x. Now we want delta x on its own and that means we have to swap it with big A. And that tells us that the answer here is D. On a newly discovered planet, an object of mass 8 kilograms has a weight of 60 newtons. Gravitational field strength is going to be one of these values in newtons per kilogram. Well, to get newtons per kilogram, we need to divide the newtons by the kilograms here. Okay, so we've got 60 newtons over 8 kilograms. That's going to give 60 over 8 newtons over kilograms. And that's going to be 7.5 newtons per kilogram, answer B. Question 9. A small bubble is rising through a liquid at a constant speed. Which row of the table correctly summarizes the forces in both the diagram and the equation? In these uh, diagrams, V is viscous drag, U is up thrust, and W is weight. So we know that U acts upward, and uh, we're told that the ball, or the bubble, sorry, is rising. So if it's heading up, drag will be acting against that motion, so it'll act down. We know that weight already. We already know that weight acts down. So we're looking for the upthrust acting in the upward direction and both the viscous drag and W acting in the downward direction. So if we take a look at these, uh, we can rule out A because it has two things acting up. We're really looking for U acting up. Uh, we can also rule out D. So it's between B and C. Um, the diagrams are both right, but uh, the equation in B is wrong. Okay, so it's C that's correct here. Question 10. A lift carries people from one floor up to the floor above. Which graph shows how the acceleration of the lift varies with time for the complete journey? Assume that the upward direction is positive. Okay, so to get going, the lift will have to have an upward acceleration. So we're looking for something that begins with an upward acceleration. So we can rule these two out. Then we just recognize that um, as well as something to get it going in the upward direction, there will need to be something that opposes upward motion to get it to uh, slow down and stop. And so the first one then can be ruled out, and that leaves us with B.